uh, for a long, long time. A little scar here that is courtesy of the late Les Clark, Wendell's dad. Uh, we used to play hockey against one another back in the 70s, and uh, Wendell was like his dad. Uh, he was pretty vicious out on the ice. I also have something that uh, I was asked uh, a number of years ago when I think uh, when I became Minister of Education, I was asked to uh, put in a password into a particular electronic device and make sure it's a password that you'll remember and make sure it's something that you're not going to have to change. So one of the uh, one of my staffers put in 1967. Those of you who know the Toronto Maple Leaf history will know that's the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. I hope we'll have to change that one pretty soon because uh, uh, it's been a, it's been too long anyway. Thank you very much to my colleagues. Uh, thank you very much to Ralph for being here. Very much appreciated. And thank you to all of you. I know many of you were in the Legislative Assembly, so I'm not going to I'm not going to go through my speech. I'm not going to read it because you'll you can fall asleep uh, if I start that. And those of you, of course, who want to continue to have another cup of coffee, go right ahead uh, because uh, you you have probably paid attention to it. And, and I'm going to try to do that uh, thirty thousand foot level of the budget. It's very uh, intricate in terms of the numbers, uh, but it's something that you have to understand to be able to see the direction of government. If you look at that board over there, and I'm going to sort of highlight those those points because I think if I tell you a little bit about those points, you'll know uh, what this budget is all about. The very first point, of course, is a balanced budget. We have our government under the leadership of Brad, as always said, we're going to live within our means. And living within our means means you have to have a balanced budget. And this year, that balanced budget is uh, will have a surplus of, of $71 million. We also said that uh, in this budget, there are no tax increases. Now, I can tell you that to arrive at no tax increases is not easy. Uh, we had demands on us. Uh, and I want to I want to begin by sort of giving you a quick little history of how, do, how does the Treasury Board process start? Minister of Finance issues a call for estimates in June. Literally, the preparation of next year's budget is starting already. So when, when the minister calls for estimates and we receive all that information, ministries come in and I can tell you that the, uh, the total package that we received was literally hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars more than what you see now in our budget. So Treasury Board has to make a decision. Do you raise the uh, EPT, the Education Property Tax Mill Rates? Maybe a half a mill across the province. A half a mill across the province is $55 million, more or less. And that would give us $55 million to do additional spend. Or you can say to the credit unions, you know, you've been receiving a, uh, an exemption for many, many years. The feds have made a decision last year to phase that out and to credit unions, not only the small business tax exemption of about $7 million, but the capital tax exemption of another five, that's $12 million. So if we cancel that, we'd have $12 million. Those are the kinds of decisions that Treasury Board is faced with. Do we do this tax? Do we, do we remove this exemption? Because over here, there are significant demands. Health wants more money. Post-secondary wants more money. I understand that U of R is a little upset about some of the things. So there's always this, you know, going back and forth and building a budget. So we, we decided that we were not going to increase taxes. Now you have a base of dollars. We, when we started the process last year, the, the expected revenue growth was going to be about 4%. But then a lot of things happened, totally out of the, our control. We saw what happened with Eurocali, the potash company in, uh, in Russia with Belarus. And all of a sudden, limited sales, potash dropping. Today's price, if you look at our, at our budget, you'll see a, a potash price that's significantly lower than last year's. We, uh, we looked at the oil revenue. The only great, not only, but the really positive thing about Saskatchewan is growth. The, yesterday we announced the new StatScan numbers. We have 1,117,503 people in this province. And that meant 20,000 more people in the course of a year. That meant more taxpayers, that meant more PST, more personal income tax. So those things are growing, where over here on the other side, uh, things were, were declining. The end result, and we made this decision uh, a long time ago, that we were going to move to summaries. We were going to 
focus on Summers because I want to clarify because some of the media have misrepresented the actual position of government for a while. Summaries have been in existence since 2004, 2005. They're part of the budget. They've been there. They were introduced in, by the NDP, by uh, Finance Minister Mellinger. But there was not a focus on summaries. The focus was on the general revenue fund, or what we often refer to as the operating checkbook side. That's your expenses of the day-to-day -day operations of government. There was a bit of contradiction. Some auditors said, oh, well, you've got to make your GRF exactly like your summaries. You've got to report the pension liability. You have to, no, the, the, the accountants uh, within finance said, no, this is a subset. And by the way, it still remains as a subset. Because if you look at our documents, you'll see an additional document in our budget package. You'll see something called a core operational plan. Core operational plan is really another word for what was the GRF. We still have to have, uh, according to the Appropriation Act, we still have to have the estimates. The estimates are what are presented in the Legislative Assembly. The debate is underway uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, of course, the first day uh, of resumption of debate, and we're going to debate the estimates. We're going to vote on the estimates because these are the, this is the way money is handed out throughout all parts of government. But on the other side, we wanted to ensure that we move towards summary. And what is summary? Well, there's only one budget. It's a summary budget, and it controls everything. And that summary budget, if we compare it to last year's revenue, is down. It's down 0.7%. So we had, a, we had a, a task. Do we control spending, or do we increase taxes? And you can see this, the third point was, no, our preference was we were going to control spending. And there are decisions made where certain groups are going to say, gee, we were expecting way more money than what we received. But we had to work within that balance. We still wanted to identify very specific things. Health is still very, very important. And it received significant funding. Education, social services, advanced education, those four ministries spend over $8 billion. In fact, it's $8.2 billion. And if you look in the core operational plan, that budget still is, is just under $12 uh, billion. So 11.9, 8.2 of that is going to those four ministries. So again, we, we wanted to indicate that, that uh, we're, we're, we recognize that priority and that we were spending additional dollars. Now, you're going to see again in the summaries, summaries contain about 260 entities, a little bit more than that, 260. They're all our crowns. They're all the treasury board agencies. They're the regional colleges, the, the regional health authorities, school boards, the uh, not-for-profit insurance organizations, the auto fund, workers' compensation boards, Saskatchewan crop insurance. All of those things uh, make up the summaries. And last year when I presented the budget, the summary budget as well. Summary budget, it indicated that we were going to uh, estimate a surplus of $149 million. Now, I wanna, the reason I'm going to mention these numbers is just to show you how the volatility can occur. We're going to finish this year, another few more days, what's well, today's the 21st, so 10 more days, 10 more days until year end, we're gonna probably finish this year with just under a $600 million surplus in summary. Why? Well, there was a change in, in some of the investment uh, earnings over at, uh, at Workers' Compensation Board. We didn't have a massive hailstorm that destroyed thousands and thousands of automobiles. We had a crop this year, a very, very bountiful crop, and crop insurance didn't have a lot of claims. And we had some changes in, in the profits at, at certain crowns. But over on the checkbook side, and I re reported this in Q3, we have to actually transfer some savings dollars. We have to take some dollars out of the growth and financial security fund, 135 million to be exact, to pay our bills on the checking side. So you can see that I think for, for a while, people in Saskatchewan are going to have to read very carefully to the numbers because all of a sudden our budget is, 14, is based on a revenue of $14.07 billion. Last year's budget was on $11.5 billion. 
So what happened? How did you get $3 billion? And, and all of those kinds of explanations are going to be needed. What I want to spend a few moments on as well is not only on, on the fact that we had no, no tax increases, we've controlled spendings, but those last two bullets are very, very important to us. Investments in infrastructure and investments in people. Now, when we talk about no business, uh, no increases, as I've said about the credit unions, it, it, was, it was a decision that, uh, that we, uh, we took, was, was on the table, and we looked at it and said, you know, 162 communities in this province only have a credit union. The, financial, the other financial institutions are not there. Credit unions do amazing things for the province of Saskatchewan. Yes, it's a $12 million benefit to them, but we think it's more than that kind of benefit to the people of Saskatchewan. So you make that tough decision. The end result is, on the expense side, our expenses are $28 million lower than last year. So, some of the comments yesterday and the day before, by the opposition especially, and that's as about as political as I'll get today, is, you know, oh, well, this is, this is, you know, bountiful times in Saskatchewan, you have all of this money, you should be doing this, you should set aside dollars in the, in the futures fund. Well, I listened very, yesterday to a particular professor say, set aside two-thirds of what is in the non-renewable resource fund. Well, in the non-renewable category, you'll look in here, you'll see about 2.7 million. So he said, take two-thirds of that and put that into the uh, uh, futures fund. Well, if you take two-thirds of that, tell me where, what we're going to do with $2 billion less revenue. Does that mean then we add, and you won't have to add one mill, you'll have to add 10 mills of taxes. You'll have to increase liquor tax, you'll have to increase tobacco tax, you'll have to do a whole host of things to suddenly say, well, we're going we're gonna to do this over here. We didn't. We want to, absolutely. Peter McKinnon's idea is a great idea. But it's based on the fact that, when, and that was a caveat that we accepted, and that caveat was that when non-renewable resources exceed 26% of the core, not the, not the whole uh, summary budget, we'll set aside dollars in a, in a, in a futures fund. And I think that's, that's what we're going to do. In the course of this next year, we're in fact going to even look at what could be the governance structure. Peter McKinnon has recommended some ideas about, about what we should do there. Now, very quickly, I want to talk a little bit about, about uh, uh, investments in infrastructure. I'm going to talk about the Crown. Three, three segments, of, if, you th if you think about Crown expenditures and the fact that we're going to spend $2 billion on Crowns this year, that's what's, what Crowns are going to invest. In the period of time, 2000 to 2007, okay, Crowns spent, on average, $568 million annually. 568 million. Between 2008 and 2012, that number jumped to 1.1 billion dollars. Now, the next period of time, 2013 to 18, we're projecting that crowns are going to spend 1.7 billion dollars in England. That's three times as much as the period of time 2000 to 2007. We need to do it. We need to ensure that our crowns uh, meet the challenges of today, and it doesn't matter whether you look at SAS power or whether you look at, whoops, almost water everywhere. I do talk with my hands. <laughs> SAS power, SAS energy, SAS tail, they are going to keep moving forward. But on top of that $2 billion worth of crown infrastructure, we're spending 900 million, nearly 900, 887 million to be exact, on infrastructure in all the other ministries. And that's a combination of 124 million for municipal infrastructure. 50 million of that is here in Regina for the stadium. Little discussion on the stadium. Uh, some criticism saying, oh, how, you know, how can you be allocating $80 million to a stadium in Regina when we have these other demands? That proportion is no different than the funding that we allocated to Moose Jaw and to Melville and to Yorkton and all of the other uh, urban communities that require infrastructure. It's, it's relative in, in terms of the size of the project, the population. So it's not that we've suddenly identified the stadium as the big winner. It's equal. And we're trying to treat everyone equal in this province. We've always had some discussion with uh, Saskatoon about transportation, with the city of Regina about transportation. And we're moving forward with some discussions with Saskatoon about a new commuter bridge in North Saskatoon. 
We believe that uh, that's needed, but we also believe there has to be another partner. There has to be a federal partner, and uh, Ralph will take this back, I'm sure, to the, the, the government members. We need the feds on board in that, for that commuter bridge in Saskatoon. It's a biggie. We need the feds on board for another biggie, and the biggie is the Regina Bypass. Regina Bypass, when we started talking about it five, six years ago, 700 million, 800 million, and I almost fell off my chair. But we're now talking 1.3 billion. We need the feds uh, to be partnered because there's an application to P3 Canada. And P3 Canada has to be a partner. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. The government's not going to fund $1.3 billion of a project immediately. We'll do the conventional build and we'll do one phase and another phase. And who knows, 15 years from now, we might be finished. Warren will be finance minister. I won't be. I can tell you that. <laughs> The other thing we announced is, is where is the next uh, major health facility going to go? We've got the Children's Hospital in Saskatoon underway. We've got Saskatchewan North Battleford, uh, the North Battleford Hospital and uh, uh, Correction Centre underway. We've got Moose Jaw Hospital in its last stage, uh, requiring $16 million this year, and that'll finish that job. The next uh, announcement was that the Victoria Hospital, the renewal of the Victoria Hospital in Prince Albert, is going to be the next one that we're going to focus on, and we've put $2 million into some seed money to get that one started. Infrastructure like highways is also very important. So we've added $88 million to the highway budget. It's for twinning lanes, it's for passing lanes, it's for repaving 300 kilometers of highway in this province. Significant need in, in infrastructure. We've, as far as the education budget, we added a significant amount of dollars in capital. We're going to spend $96 million this year for education capital. That's Langenberg and, and Gravelberg that I announced last uh, year. They need the next phase of money, $9.5 million. We've announced four new projects, and I always use this expression. We, we kick them out the door with some seed money to get started, get their planning. $4 million for some very specific projects, two here in the city of, of Regina, Connaught School and the Sacred Heart School. Both of them are underway. They're going to be, uh, first estimates now are somewhere between 23 and $26 million each. That's what we're going to have to uh, come up with over the next course of the next four years. We've also kicked out the K-12 expansion at St. Brew and the uh, renovation at uh, Moose Jaw, the Sacred Heart School at Moose Jaw is going to need some more money. Advanced education, some infrastructure dollars there. $32.7 million in infrastructure at the post-secondary level. $6.5 million for the Academic Health Sciences Building. I'm sure everybody has heard the word Academic Health Sciences Building. We're now going to have uh, invested, along with the U of S, we will have invested $324 million into that facility already. Why? Because it's needed. We have added 100 We've increased the uh, medical doctor training seats to 100. We've increased the residency seats to 120. We've increased the number of nurse training seats to 690. So that building was needed. S significant spend on that building, but it's something that we're, we're, uh, we're involved with. There's still going to be a, another couple of phases that are going to require even more dollars. The Yorkton Parkland Regional College Trade Center. That was announced last year. It's underway. They're, they've opened tenders already. We, our commitment is in a further $4.5 million to make sure that that keeps moving. And we also even, the Southeast Regional College, Weyburn, $1 million to make sure that that building gets finished. As far as other facilities across the piece, we, we announced uh, $8 million for the Saskatoon's Parkland, uh, Park Ridge Center, long-term care. $27 million for LTCs that are underway. They're, they're in the next phase of, of money need at Maple Creek, Bigger, Kelvington, Prince Albert, Kipling. We've also announced uh, the uh, additional dollars to look at something right here in, in Regina. Regina Extended Care Replacement. It's needed. So we all put some dollars up now to start looking at that and seeing what kind of uh, replacement actually might take, care, take place. We've added some dollars into the budget for LaRange. LaRange has been in need of long-term care expansion uh, for, for many, many, many years. 
We've also, we're still moving forward on the Swift, Tur Swift Current uh, long-term care facility by way of a P3. It will need the next tranche of money. And as I mentioned, the, Sask the Saskatchewan Hospital in North Battleford, those two projects alone have taken up 4.6 million. I could spend a lot of time on infrastructure, but I just want to highlight a few more things on, on uh, uh, the bottom one, investments in people. When we take a look at the health budget, as I indicated, $5 billion. Regional health authorities, the 12 regional health authorities are going to receive $3.25 billion. That's up 3.4%. We also have another agency that is very, very important in Saskatchewan, and that's the Saskatchewan C Cancer Agency. It's different than the 12 regional health authorities. Its budget is up 3.3%. It's going to receive $155 million. The Home First Quick Response Care Home Program here in Regina, we're looking at that and we've, we've provided $4.5 million. That's up $2.5 million from last year because we think there will be an opportunity to save some dollars if we, if we uh, deal with the home care first and, and able to handle the response. Uh, another area last year, if you recall, Minister Duncan uh, moved forward with a $10 million expenditure for dealing with uh, urgent needs, seniors. Uh, it was called the Seniors Care Urgent Issues Fund, $10 million. Well, some of that money was used to actually put in place HR, Human Resource Complement. Now that Human Resource Complement is there, they need to continue to stay there, so 3.7 extra million, $3.7 million more into that uh, program. One of the things we're very proud of is, uh, and the Premier has stated this many times, Saskatchewan is going to be one of the best places to, to live in uh, if you are a person with disabilities. And I can tell you that uh, this year's budget contains $446 million for programming for people with disabilities. That's up $83.4 million from last year, and it's more than double of what we, what we took when we took office. Education budget is up, is up to the uh, amount of 1.76 billion or 3.1 percent, and we're actually setting aside in that budget 19 million dollars. This is a, this is a positive spend for me, having been involved in education and being a edu uh, former education minister. 19 million dollars for the anticipated enrollment growth for 2014-15 of 2,140 students. That's that's great because I can tell you. You know, I, I was part of a school board that made some choices to close schools. And uh, our enrollment was dropping. If you recall the, the bad years of the 80s and, and into the 90s, enrollment in, this, in the province of Saskatchewan was dropping by 3,500 students a year. Now we're turned that corner and we're on the way up. Those that 1 million 117,000 people, I think, are helping that. 815,000 is being put into this year's budget to address bullying and cyberbullying. $20 million into the pre-K program. We're adding 16 more pre-K, sorry, 15. I get, there's 16 students in a pre-K program. There's 15 programs. That takes us to 316 programs now in the province of Saskatchewan for pre-K. That's your four-year-olds and your vulnerable three-year-olds. We've added 500 new childcare spaces. Now we're going to be over 14,000. Now that's not a you know not the, the highest number that we're going, to, we're going to have to be at, but it's 5,000 more spaces than what we had in 2007. When we talk to business owners, when we talk to business owners, we hear very clearly one of their challenges is finding enough skilled workers. So we've done additional dollars into not only not only providing to the institutions, but also post graduation. And one of the programs that I want to highlight, and I think that will be my last one to leave some time for, question, uh, for some questions, is the Graduate Retention Program. We began that in 2008. And that's, of course, if you're a student and you've incurred four-year program, you can get back $20,000 of your tuition over a period of seven years. We thought, is that going to is that going to help? Is that going to uh, help our young people who are leaving and going elsewhere to look for jobs? Will that help retain them? Well, I can tell you it's working. $82 million is going to be the expenditure this year. $82 million. Over 60,000 graduates are taking advantage of the Graduate Retention Program. So that is why. That is why we have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the province of Saskatchewan. That's why we continue to see job growth. That's why we continue to see all of those things that I've talked about move forward 
We are, we've moved forward with some significant dollars for the adult basic education program. We added 300 seats last year. We've added 700 more seats this year. We added 300 apprenticeship seats last year. We're adding another 300 seats this year. So I think overall you can see that our budget has tried to deal with a lot of things. It's First of all, it's balanced. We did not want to increase taxes, as I stated in my speech. Our party and, and Premier Brad's uh, uh, conviction is that tax increases are our last resort. What we have to do is we have to control spending, and I think we've done that. We've had to make important investments in infrastructure, in people, and I think we've done that. And I think it's going to keep Saskatchewan on a steady growth plan. Thank you. We'll open it up for some questions. of the SASC Futures Fund? That's the, that's the hottest topic of the budget. I love that because we're not talking about all of the other things. No, the, uh, <laughs> this one is a, it is, a, is a question that we uh, looked at a number of years ago. That's why we contracted Peter McKinnon to say, what, do we, what will we need to do when that opportunity comes again? And we believe it will. Uh, I, you know, I didn't talk a lot about uh, about the non-renewable resource center uh, sector, but it's going to grow. We've got Cigar Lake producing ore, for, uh, uranium ore, just just this last week. We're going to see a stability return to potash. You know, I think even with oil, uh, as far as as the differential, and I, I, how many people understand when I talk about an oil differential? How many people understand what that is? Yeah, okay, here's your here's your differential 102 plus. The differential means that's a discount. That's what the refineries can do to us and say, no, no, you have too much heavy crude in your in the line versus the sweet, medium sweet crude, which they like out of Bakken, and we're going to discount that oil. And that discount is 19%, 19.5% is what we're looking at this year. What does that mean for Saskatchewan? Well, instead of the amount that we should receive, we're going to lose about $400 million because we don't have Gateway Pipeline, we don't have Keystone, we are hoping, of course, that the change in Sarnia to Montreal is going to help. We, have, we know that there's more oil moving by rail, but that we need to bring that differential down. That discount is, is a loss of your dollars you know, uh, exponentially. So that's got to change. But I think once that changes, and there's a point when, and, and Peter recommended, that when non-renewable resources are, 20, are more than 26% of your total budget, your total core budget, you should be setting aside those additional dollars into a fund. We agree. But 26% will mean that instead of the 2.6 billion that we have in our budget this year, we would have had to have 3.1 billion. 3.1 billion would have been that magic bar. So we, we that's one of the criteria. The other criteria was about, oh, what should what should happen to our current debt? I have heard from probably even some of the uh, some of you in this room pay off the debt. That 6.8 billion that you uh, inherited in 2007 that we've been fortunate enough to pay down 3 billion of that, we're only at 3.8 billion, only. We are at this number of 3.8 billion needs to be paid off. Yes, I agree, but I think if we suddenly have a windfall, and if I said to the Premier next year, you know what, Crown land sales are no longer at 100 million, they're at 900 million, just like they were a number of years ago, and we've got this windfall money. It's way more than uh, you know, uh, $1 billion. I dare say we would be putting some into a fund right off the get-go, and of course, paying down some of the debt as well to keep driving those costs down. So, yes, the futures fund is going to happen. When it will happen is, uh, is a bit of a question mark, but it's not going to be that 10 or 15 year as some of the not so optimistic uh, media in this city uh, put forward. I think that's all the questions we have right now. So I guess you're pretty thorough. <laughs> no, Thank any you questions so much. Have, uh, something that, I, that you want me to clarify? You're happy with what I've said? Great. Again, all of these documents are online. And if you have a question, 
look at it, and then if you still have a question, phone me.